Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Neveld, managing partner and co-founder of technologycatalog.com, and I'm your host of today's webinar. For those of you who are, who are not yet familiar of technologycatalog.com, just in a nutshell, our aim is to make technology, to make it as easy to find, make technology finding as easy as finding a restaurant or a great hotel to, to stay. And one of the things that we do is to organize webinars like this one. And the webinars are also a great way to get introduced to technologies without having a need to travel. So today's webinar is gonna last about 10 minutes followed by Q and A. I would like to hand over to Jackson Richards, all the way from the east part of Australia. And on a very interesting topic today, with lots of potential impact. So over to you, Jackson. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just bring up the uh, slide deck here. Um, okay, yep. excellent. Okay. All right, as uh, Eric said, my name is Jackson Richards. I'm from uh, Australia in a Brisbane-based uh, mathematics company and called Polymathium. And today we're gonna to be running through a particular product called Vault, uh, and under the guise of reshaping the energy industry with industrial mathematics. Um, there's a few terms in there that people may not be familiar with, so uh, we'll run through them at the start of the presentation. Um, let's jump straight into it. We don't have much time. So first thing, a little bit about polymathic, because there aren't many businesses around that are like us. So we are an industrial mathematics software company. And so what that means is that we produce uh, mathematical software that helps businesses make decisions. And so those decisions could be in the next two seconds, or they could be decisions that need to be made 150 years from now. And that can span a huge number of industries. So some of the products we have, which we'll uh, run through just at the bottom here. So obviously on the left, we have Vault, which is in the energy industry, which we'll be talking about today. We have Vault, which is a product that works uh, in bulk supply chains and optimizing their operations. Uh, we have Orb, which is a mining uh, suite of tools that works anywhere from strategic mining down to what truck needs to go where in the next five seconds. Uh, Race, which is a uh, rolling stock uh, network optimization tool. Solo, which deals with maritime operations, so moving fleets of vessels, scheduling marine pilots. And then Gear as well, which is fixed asset maintenance scheduling. Uh, so this mathematical uh, optimization can be applied to solve problems and make decisions over a range of different industries. So first of all, what is industrial mathematics? Uh, whenever I say I'm a mathematician, people say, where do you teach? Which is a little bit upsetting because there's a lot of maths out there uh, that isn't in the academic realm. So what, what we say uh, industrial mathematics is, is it's using mathematical, statistical, and software techniques to solve business problems. And there's a couple of parts to those decisions. Uh, the first part is tool selection. So as a practitioner, you have a bunch of different tools on your belt that you can use to make decisions and help making decisions in a business. And so the top four that we typically use are listed here. So we've got mathematical optimization, AI and machine learning, simulation and statistical analysis. And so typically you'll need to use one or more of these to solve a particular business problem. So for example, uh, Vault is a mathematical optimization tool. And within that, we need to know very precisely if you have a turbine, if you want this much energy, how much fuel do you need to use? And you may need to conduct a statistical exercise to be able to get that data. Uh, you know, another example would be if you're looking at like a rock crushing plant for a, in part of a mine processing facility. Um, you know, modeling that with an exact mathematical relationship is extremely difficult. If I give you a rock, you cannot tell me precisely how long it's gonna to take to crush that into sand. So you need to use a, a black box or a statistical approach, perhaps machine learning or simulation. So the first part of industrial mathematics is tool selection. What tool am I going to use? Second part is can that software, can that approach be used to solve problems in a realistic time frame, in a usable time frame? And so that also has a couple of parts. So can the software be used by anyone? Uh, you know, is it a, some incredibly complicated spreadsheet that gets emailed around or is it a slick piece of software that gets used? And then if I press go to get an answer, 
is it going to take two days or am I going to be able to get an answer in 10 minutes? You know, if I need to produce some kind of schedule every day, I'm going to need under half an hour, maybe 10 minutes. So there's two parts. There's a tool selection and then there's actually getting it into people's hands in a usable way in practice. That's what we consider industrial mathematics. So specific to the industry, what, when I say making decisions, what kind of decisions are we talking about with this software? So you know, if we go through each of these particular use cases, you've got uh, power generators. So generators, uh, they all obviously have power generation assets and the decisions they're making is, what do I do with these assets over time? They're a dispatch optimization problem. Uh, how much power do I need to be producing the rest of the day? It could be in months time. How much power am I gonna be selling in a year's time? Um, Network operators as well. So network operators have a slightly different problem where the focus is less on the specifics of the assets and more what do the assets need to be outputting so that I can balance this entire network. So think in terms of energy market operators and people like that. And they're making you know, thousands of decisions every minute to dispatch different assets. And you've got cogeneration plants. So cogeneration plants are where we're talking about having multiple resources as well as steam. Uh, with a lot of power. So we have power, steam, potentially water flowing around networks. Uh, and so in those sites, you're going to be have, you're going to have an interchange between power and steam and different kinds of fuel coming into the network. Uh, so it's a, it's still an asset dispatch problem, but it's also a network dispatch problem sitting over the top. And then vertically integrated players. So the decisions that they're going to be making are, uh, I may control, uh, I may be mining gas as well as potentially burning gas through a power station and selling it as power. So I'm going to be making decisions as to uh, whether I should be you know, commercially focused decisions as to whether I should be uh, compressing the gas and selling it directly as gas, or if I'm going to be burning power, uh, burning it through a power station and selling the power. So these are the kind of decisions we're talking about solving with Vault. So what is Vault? I've alluded to it. Vault is a, a data-driven dispatch optimization tool. And so what we mean by data-driven is that the tool, the specifics of a particular site or a particular set of operations are configured in the data of the tool. It isn't buried in the code somewhere. So a deployment process is typically quite simple. Um, so Vault is built upon an exact mathematical optimization technique. And typically the focus of the decisions is to maximize gross margin, maximize margin or minimize costs if you're not including revenues. And so to be able to make these decisions, Vault needs to know three things in detail. And they're the three things that are listed here. It needs quite an accurate representation of the network that the assets are sitting in and how that network behaves. So for a generator, that would simply just be fuel coming in and power going out if you just had a single generation asset. Uh, it may be a complicated cogeneration network with steam and power all moving around. Um, basically how the assets are connected to each other. It also needs to know how the assets behave. So if Vault uh, considers 100 megawatts coming out of a gas turbine, it needs to know with some precision how much fuel that is going to take. Uh, if there's a boiler and it wants 100 tons of steam per hour, it's gonna to need to know uh, how much water needs to be put in, how much fuel needs to be put in to raise that steam. Uh, Steam turbines, quite complex, but they can be modeled as well. It's to know steam coming in, steam coming out, power coming out. Um, and then also tying those two things together is the financial model. So Vault needs to know in, in some detail, how do you actually make money? How much money do you earn selling steam to customers? How much money do you pay for your fuel? Are there gas supply agreements? Um, are there power purchase agreements for some assets? Vault is able to represent quite detailed financial models intrinsically in the tool, just data-driven, uh, configured in the tool. So when we have all these three things together, Vault is actually able to make some excellent decisions, some mathematically optimal decisions uh, using mathematical optimization. But what does Vault actually look like? So Vault is a cloud-based tool. It's a cloud-based tool. It's entirely deployed in the cloud. So what that means is that when users go to log in, and this is getting back to what I was mentioning before, is the tool usable in some way? Uh, how do people actually access it? Uh, users will be given a URL. Now log into that URL, and you can end up in one of two places. One is a scenario sort of standalone tool where you can uh, look at your network, like one is pictured there, 
uh, and you can make changes to it and run dispatch scenarios. So you could manipulate the power price, you could manipulate the gas price, you could construct new pipelines between your assets. You could add restrictions to assets and say, in this scenario, I want to limit the power output of one asset to this. Um, and that is all self-contained in a scenario analysis. And so you may be using those uh, multiple times a day, looking at day ahead dispatch profiles. What do I need to be doing tomorrow to maximize my gross margin? Are there assets I need to turn on now because they have some kind of ramp rate to turn on? Well, it's able to model all that. The other place you could end up in, uh, which is the really exciting one, is real-time dispatch. So Vault can be deployed in a continuous, autonomous, real-time dispatch functionality. And so what that means is that the Vault platform uh, can be connected with real-time data feeds and it can be continuously optimizing the operations of your network or your assets and presenting that to you through a web interface. So something like a dashboard. So you can log in, look at one screen and see what is the maximum gross margin I could be earning right now and what am I actually earning right now and what do I need to do to close the gap between those two things. And so a deployment like that requires uh, significant data integration, uh, which can be done with Vault. So Vault has been deployed in a particular case with financial data being received through the cloud, uh, asset data, tag data coming through, SCADA systems coming through the cloud quite successfully. So we'll, I'll, I'll talk through one of the case studies we have, so a particular client. So uh, this is this use case of Vault uh, was the continuous real-time optimization uh, of the operations of a multi-utility co-generation industrial site. So potentially one of the most complicated dispatch problems that could be solved with this tool. And so this site is a, a large industrial site with uh, about 15 to 20 uh, processing facilities on the site, so customers, and they consume power and steam essentially continuously. And so Vault is used by the operator of this network. So the operator of this network has to provide power and steam to the on-site customers at all times. Then they also have the ability to make money selling the power. They have a connection to the national power grid so they can uh, do merchant trading with the power. And so what Vault is used for in this case uh, is real-time optimization. So the operators in the control room have Vault sitting in a dashboard and they look at it at every instant and it can tell them in real time, what they need to be doing, how they should be adjusting to their customer demands, which are changing continuously. Uh, it also receives the traded financial position of the site. So, uh, you know, power is traded so you don't have to generate an advantageous, where it's financially advantageous to do so. And so all of that data is flowing into Vault, into the web, in the cloud, and it's continuously optimizing the site. Um, so the operators of the network have many different ways of generating power and steam. Uh, they have assets that burn fossil fuels, assets that are renewable. Uh, they have assets that can do, produce just power, just steam, convert between power and steam, and convert different steam types into each other. So there's multiple steam networks at this site. And tying them all together, together is a very complicated gross margin function. So Vault has all of that put into it, and it's optimizing continuously in real time. So the results were extremely pleasing. So if you take a traded financial position, so if you're just looking at, can I use the assets in a smarter way uh, without changing how much power I'm producing overall, there was 5% operational efficiency there. So a 5% increase in gross margin, uh, just tweaking how the assets are operating to a particular traded position where Vault was exploiting the financial calculations uh, to produce mathematically optimal results uh, to find 5% sitting on the table. Then what you can also do is extend Vault to allow it to make uh, trading suggestions. So how should, it tr how should you change your traded financial position with respect to power? Uh, so what Vault will do is hunt for upside. It will hunt for revenue. Uh, if power is cheaper to buy, it will turn all your assets down and buy the power. And so what was found is there is an extra 7% in that use case of Vault. So an overall 12% increase in gross margin by deploying Vault in this real-time use case, where that 12% comprises some part of just cost minimization, optimizing against the traded position, and then also hunting for new revenue, hunting for ways it can change the traded position of the site to maximize revenue. 
we've covered a lot there very quickly. I think I was on time, hopefully. Uh, again, my name is Jackson Richards. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, I work for Polymathian, obviously, in Australia, and more than happy to now jump into some questions and talk in more detail if we can. Hey, thank you very much for the Jackson. A great presentation. If anyone has questions to Jackson, please ask them in the chat box. And so the first question is coming in. The question is, can Fault work with assets, maintenance data, for example, RBI database, so risk-based inspection uh, database? If yes, can it also give feedback what the optimum turnaround time is? Oh, okay. There's two parts to that question. Yes, it can. And that kind of data is fantastic because uh, typically maintenance data is quite hard to come by, um, especially in a data, a reusable data format. So yes, um, in the real-time deployments with Vault and even in the off -time, offline deployments where it's not continuously optimizing, uh, there are many different ways of inputting maintenance data into Vault. You can have assets offline for fixed periods of time. You can have restrictions on certain behaviors of assets. So yes, uh, and Vault can integrate with those directly, yes. Uh, as for uh, making recommendations, um, so Vault, it can in a way, I would need to sort of know more detail about the specifics of the data, but yes, yeah, so uh, Vault can recommend when it may be advantageous to end maintenance and bring an asset back online, uh, and it can make recommendations over, you know, delaying that potentially over some periods of time. Um, but I'd be interested to hear more about what kinds of data you have. But yes to the integration with that data, and I would say yes to some extent, and yes potentially more uh, with the different kinds of decisions you'd be looking at making. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, Jackson, can you say a bit about how you typically get started with a project? Yeah, so uh, how we typically approach that is through a phased approach. So we would avoid um, trying to guess too much of the future ahead of time. So the first part of that of Vault deployment uh, would be producing a model uh, of the assets or of the network in Vault. And that can be done by Polymathian or in conjunction with the particular client. And so we would look at, can we get data about uh, how, how all your assets operate? Can we model the network of how all your assets are pieced together? And so what we would first typically do is do uh, the scenario type tool where we produce scenarios and make sure that everything is right, uh, modeling the financials uh, as well. And then look to transition that to, okay, now we need to get data coming in. Where does the data come from? Can we interface with SCADA systems? Can we interface with you know, AWS Azure systems to get data into Vault? So first of all, we would look at modeling the site and the, the details of the financials. And then we would look at data integration after that. And then of course, rolling out and training users. Okay, excellent. And can you say a bit who your typical customers uh, are? So what, what, what roles do the people uh, have in the, the organizations? Yeah, it can be a few uh, different people. It can be commercial teams. So the energy markets teams who are looking at, who will typically be dispatching or have some control over the dispatch of the assets. Uh, and so they're going to be using the tool multiple times per day, you know, potentially multiple times per hour, uh, looking at uh, exploiting traded opportunities. Uh, and how they should be flexing their assets. Uh, then you can also have operations teams, so the teams that are in charge of uh, operating the assets day to day, uh, and they may have each day working out day ahead plans, how they're going to be bringing assets online or offline, and looking at when is advantageous to do that, or in fact, how to do that over time if the network is complicated enough. Uh, and then, of course, you've got performance optimization teams. So teams within businesses that are looking at how do we make what we have better? And they're probably a, a, quite a good example of the clients involved. Uh, so they'll be running interesting scenarios. They'll be running scenarios with new pipelines, new assets uh, in them and things like that. So they're probably the three main areas. Okay, excellent. And I can imagine that uh, the current focus on CO2 emission reduction can potentially help to get the right entries. Is that correct? Yeah. So there's sort of two parts to uh, renewable energy. There's the actual behavior of the assets. So how much CMO, CO2 am I producing? Uh, or how much renewable fuel am I consuming, which comes into the asset models. So you could directly represent that, the CO2 coming of you out of your asset involved. Um, and then there's also the financial side. So typically, um, you know, across the world, different schemes, uh, legislation exists with different pricing incentives or disincentives for using renewable energy. 
and we have experience in implementing them within Vault. So what that means is that you know, when you're dispatching your assets, you are including that and optimizing to your obligations or to your incentives under any renewable energy schemes that exist. Excellent. So there's one uh, final question. Uh, are you also looking at non-industrial applications for this uh, technology, for example, for the optimization of, uh, of, uh, of homes or, uh, for example, optimization of homes that are powered with uh, solar energy and to see if some uh, further fine tuning can be done there. Can you say something it could, about that? It could be done. Um, you know, Vault is, all of this in industrial mathematics is about decision making. So it depends how important those decisions are that are being made um, and to what extent, how many decisions can be made. Um, so within a home, possibly, uh, it depends on the scale of those decisions. Well, what, you know, do you have four decisions to make and you can do it by hand extremely easily? Or do you have 10,000 decisions that need to be made for you? Um, in terms of, you know, where I see Vault in that area is uh, managing the networks of which large solar arrays or distributed solar, rooftop solar becomes part of. So how do you balance a network or how do you operate a power network where you have 10,000 homes with non-scheduled power generation being put into the grid and how do you balance the network? That sort of network operator use case. Um, that's how I would see Vault playing into that uh, the sort of home energy side of things. Okay, excellent. Let's take one uh, final question. How will artificial intelligence be used for optimization? That's a really good question. A tough one as well, actually. So one of the potential uses uh, with, you know, I'll talk about it within Vault, but the, the idea generalizes. So uh, mathematical optimization techniques are prescriptive. So you need an exact model between your decisions you're making and the constraints that overlay those decisions. Uh, but those relationships will change continuously. So in an example like Vault, um, you know, you can have these huge assets and their performance will change over time. Their performance, if you have a giant gas turbine, its performance will change based on the ambient weather temperature. It'll based on the time since you maintain the plant. Uh, there are a huge number of variables that go into predicting the performance. So Vault needs, you know, an exact representation. So the potential use of AI and sort of a machine learning approach is uh, can the models that go into Vault be continuously and automatically updated. So can they be learning from weather data, learning from what the asset did yesterday, learning from what it did a week ago to make the performance predictions uh, and the models that go into it much more accurate. That's where I see uh, potential AI or machine learning feeding into Vault. And so that idea also generalizes to other mathematical optimization models. So can we learn from all the data we have to make the models not static, but each day the models are becoming smarter. That's how I see those two things tying together. Okay, excellent. Actually, one more question came in. Let's still take that one because it's, uh, I think, a good one. It seems like this technology would be quite specific to the asset in question and its optimization calls. How much work is involved to customize the product to a new user? Yeah, that's a really good question. So Vault is, uh, Vault is built on a very generic data format. And so the way assets are modeled in data in Vault is conceptually quite simple. And so there's no, no asset is intrinsically part of Vault. A steam turbine is only a steam turbine in the data you tell you give Vault. And so uh, there's two ways we typically end up modeling an asset. Uh, we need a relationship between the inputs and outputs of an asset. And basically that's it. So every asset, has that relationship. So uh, you may be able to get that data from the original equipment manufacturers, so the GEs uh, who are making these assets and turbines. You may have performance curves that are converted into a format that Vault can use. Uh, or you look at historical data. So if you have a, typically you may have an older plant, uh, we will take it, we'll run a statistical project to look at uh, analyzing your historical data and looking at the historical performance of the asset to come up with a model that can go into Vault. But the, the framework that Vault is built on is very 
simple and the data format is very simple. And so you're able to model, I'll say an arbitrary asset um, within it uh, in quite a simple way. Um, good, that's a really good question. Yeah, excellent. I think uh, this, uh, this was the final question and let's, uh, let's stop here. So thank you very much, very interesting. I can clearly see opportunities for a technology like this one uh, with actually for, for multiple operators and not only in the parts of the world where you're already working, but also elsewhere like here in Europe. So thank you very much for this. And to all attendees, uh, thanks for attending. There will be another webinar next week. You can sign up by clicking on the relevant link in our LinkedIn post or via our newsletter. And I wish you all a great uh, rest of the day or a great day for those in Europe. Thank you very much. Bye for now.